Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing the SVU-AS sniper rifle. It's the high rate of fire, low damage sniper rifle that's astonishingly similar to the Dragunov from Call of Duty's past. Unfortunately, this is a relatively unpopular sniper rifle in Black Ops 2 because it often requires two shots to kill. However, it can be very powerful if used effectively. And in today's In Depth episode, I'm going to build you a recommended class and I'm going to show you how to murder people with the SVU-AS. We're going to start out today with a discussion of damage. The Damage on this weapon is 70. That's 70 damage no matter where you shoot somebody anywhere in their body. For those of you that you know are good at math, you'll know that means it's a two-shot kill anywhere or one-shot kill in hardcore. However, that's not entirely relevant. Uh, I prefer to do damage comparatively. This is the lowest damage sniper rifle. The DSR-50 does 98 and the XPR and Ballista do 95, so this is lower. When it comes to sniper rifles, the raw damage is again not entirely relevant because a sniper rifle's one-shot kill ability in Call of Duty games is not determined by the raw damage output, but rather by the multipliers that are placed on the body. Call of Duty has several distinct body regions that multipliers can be applied to. For instance, in older games, you would get double damage for shooting headshots. In this game, it's typically 1.2, 1.3, something like that. So I'm going to show you the body multipliers for the SVU-AS, or in practical terms, how many shots it takes to kill per region with this weapon. This is a chart that I made with the help of some subscribers and Ozzy. It's maybe not the greatest thing in the world, but it gives you an idea. You can kill somebody with one headshot, however, it takes two to the neck, two to the upper chest, two to the stomach torso region, uh, two from the, I would say, belly button down to nuts area, two in the legs, and two in the arms. So you only get one-shot kills if you shoot somebody in the head. That's the key takeaway from this. The only way for you to get one-shot kills is shooting somebody in the head. And if you put a suppressor on this weapon, it changes the shots to kill regions again, so that it takes two shots to kill with the head. Uh, everything else is basically the same. It doesn't change the damage, it just changes the body multipliers. Uh, what I want you to take away from this is that you will only get one-shot kills with headshots. No other situations will you get one-shot kills unless the person is already injured. And when you're running a suppressor, you get two shots to the head to kill somebody. It will require two shots to the head to kill somebody with a suppressor. And this is something we're going to talk about later, but you really don't get much of a loss from using a suppressor. When you use a suppressor on this weapon, all it really does is change your headshot abilities. In hardcore mode, however, since this weapon does 70 damage and you only have 30 health, it is always going to be a one-shot kill. Usually through walls too, unless you're shooting through a very, very thick wall. This is the ideal sniper rifle for hardcore because you're always going to get a one-shot kill. You can shoot through walls and it shoots faster than the other sniper rifles. So this is a very excellent hardcore weapon. In core modes, you're going to find that this weapon has okay-ish wall penetration. Sniper rifles have among the top tier wall penetration, and this is going to outclass a light machine gun, and its raw damage is pretty impressive, but it's not going to wall bang quite like the DSR, XPR, or Ballista, or something like that. It's a little bit weaker than the other sniper rifles, but way stronger than the other weapons. If you're running a sniper rifle, you're going to have 95% movement speed. This is the exact same movement speed that you get with an assault rifle, so nothing particularly bad about that. One of the strengths of the SVU-AS, one of the few strengths of this weapon is that it has the fastest rate of fire of any sniper rifle in the game, shooting at 416 RPM. This is close to the speed of some of the pistols. You can shoot this sniper rifle very, very fast and put a lot of bullets and a lot of damage downstream. It kind of makes it a spammy sniper rifle, but that's really the way you should be using it. Unfortunately, the recoil is high. There, I'm going to be changing up the recoil description a little bit with sniper rifles. I feel that this one is high. I actually think the XPR is higher, but the thing about this recoil is it has some kind of side-to-side -side wobble to it, and its idle sway is also wobblier than the other sniper rifles, because you have to consider the idle sway and the amount of kick when we're talking about sniper rifle accuracy. This one feels a lot like the Dragunov. When I shoot it, my sights have a tendency to kick up, up, but they also kick left and right, whereas most of the other sniper rifles in this game only kick up. It's just got a kind of wonky feel to it that most people aren't going to appreciate. When it comes to attachments that affect recoil on sniper rifles, there is an entire sea of myths and misconceptions and rumors and things going on that if you run this and don't run that. So we're going to talk about all the attachments individually. There are three attachments that will directly affect the recoil, and these actually increase the recoil. The suppressor, the dual band scope, and the ACOG scope all increase recoil. I have plus 10%, plus 5%, and plus 10%. These are plus bad because we're adding plus recoil and you want as little recoil as possible. All of these do increase the recoil of the weapon, but in the case of the sniper rifle, it shoots relatively slow and it's easy to control and you probably won't have a problem with it. These attachments do not change the recoil. I've tested all of these over and over and over again. They do not change the recoil. The ballistic CPU does not change the recoil. It does change the idle sway. I did 
did a whole episode on that, so you can click the little annotation or go down there in the description somewhere and look it up, or like in-depth CPU changes the idle sway only. The variable zoom does not change the recoil. It does on light machine guns, but not here. And the laser sight has no effect on the recoil or the accuracy of the sniper rifle. It's hip fire only. The biggest misconception in the world of all of Call of Duty games, and the reason I started doing these episodes to begin with, is that FMJ does not increase damage. It does not increase the raw damage of the sniper rifle. It does not increase the shots to kill boxes or multipliers or anything. I've tested all the guns. FMJ does not increase damage. It just allows you to shoot through walls better. It just removes the little piece of coating that says that walls reduce damage and that's about it. The hip fire on the SVU is poor. It has a very, very wide hip fire box. However, it is very spammable, unlike the other sniper rifles. If you pull the trigger fast enough and the enemy stands there long enough, you'll probably hit them with something and it doesn't take too many shots to kill. It's doable, but not recommended because the hip fire box is too big. I like the default scope on this weapon. The default uh, little uh, triangle U dot thing, whatever you want to call it. I kind of like that one. A lot of people don't like the more Russian y sights, but they float my boat. The aim down sights in and out time are four tenths of a second each, nothing special about that. There is no way to do this or increase it faster, there's no quick draw handle, nothing like that. The ballista aim down sights in and out a little bit faster, but this is the same as the rest of the sniper rifles. It does have the fastest reloading time, three seconds for the animation, 2.1 seconds to reload cancel. Reload canceling is probably going to be a good idea, a little bit harder to time than some of the other weapons, but entirely doable. Magazine count is large for sniper rifles, and it as well should be because you're going to need a lot of two shots to kill. You have 12 rounds normally and 17 with extended mags. I typically prefer dual mag over extended mag, but this is an okay weapon for extended mag too. This is the sniper rifle of choice for hardcore players. If you play hardcore any kind of mode, this is the only sniper rifle that you should ever bother with because it kills in the exact same amount of shots as all the other sniper rifles, but it shoots faster, has more ammo, reloads faster, and has a lot of other nice things. And I don't know why you wouldn't do this and be able to shoot faster as opposed to shooting the DSR one shot at a time, one shot at a time, way too slow. And it's also the sniper rifle for long-range spammers or suppressors, people that don't want to have to, ha to have to be one shot accurate every single time. If you're looking for kind of a hybrid between the SMR and, and a sniper rifle, this is it. I th I'm pretty sure it's based off the Dragunov, which wasn't really designed to be a sniper rifle as much as it was a designated marksman rifle or suppression style rifle. So it's built for long range, long range spamming, and that's exactly what you should do with it. It is utterly useless for quick scoping unless you're good enough to quick scope for headshots. Probably not going to have much fun with this at all. It's just really not made for quick scoping because you're not going to get any one shot kills with it. And I always recommend using a silencer with this weapon. The only way for you to get a one shot kill is to shoot them in the head with no silencer. If you put a silencer on, while well, the head's two shots to kill, it's still two to the body. And because of the kick, I always just aim for the groin or the stomach and spam a bunch of times. It kicks up and shoots them twice. If you really think you're good at one-shot kills, the silencer hurts you. But most of you, and probably most, well, I know I'm not very good at headshots. I just use the silencer and ghost and stay off the radar and spam people. And that's kind of how I built my class for this weapon. I use the laser sight and suppressor. The laser sight allows me to hip fire somewhat better because the hip fire isn't all that great and I don't always have time to put the weapon away to pull out my secondary weapon. Secondary is a trusted TAC-45, always got to roll with that one. Perks are Ghost, uh, that works with Suppressor to keep me off the radar. Toughness, because this one you're going to need two shots to kill. A lot of times people are going to be shooting at you and you really don't want to be off target. I run Dexterity with this weapon because I kind of run and gun with it and I use the pistol a little bit more. On some of the other sniper rifle classes you'll see me running Tactical Mask. Tactical Mask is also an excellent option for this sniper rifle. Well guys, that's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out my previous episode on Quick Draw versus Dexterity, you can click the box on the left, it'll open a new window. If you'd like to check out the next episode, which is going to be on the DSR-50, you can click the box on the right. It will also open in a new window. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.